is a country in Southeast Asia with a population of over 35 million people. It is bounded by India and Bangladesh on the west, China to the north, and Thailand on the east. Its area is about the size of Texas. Burma means different things to different people. To some, it speaks of the romance of the road to Mandalay, symbolized by the ruins of this fortress of the old Burmese kingdom. For others, it holds the memory of the vital Burma road of World War II, the major supply route to China's back door. For today's tourist, the country offers incomparable ancient ruins that stretch for miles. The beautiful gold-covered Shwedagon Pagoda is the goal of many Buddhist pilgrims. The people come to worship at the many shrines around the base of the pagoda, bringing gifts of food and flowers. Buddhists emphasize doing good works in this life in order to gain merit for the next life. Burma is a land where many things have not changed for a thousand years. 80% of the people live in villages and work to raise food to feed themselves and the remaining 20% of the population in the cities. A significant Christian ministry was initiated in 1813 when Anne and Adnaram Judson, the first American Baptist missionaries, arrived in Rangoon. They labored for seven years before a single person accepted Christ. But gradually the Christian faith took root and the number of believers began to increase. More missionaries arrived to help with the task of training indigenous Christian leaders. Churches, schools, hospitals, and agricultural centers were established. The hill tribes were particularly receptive to the liberating message of the gospel. No longer did the people need to fear evil spirits in trees and streams and rocks. During the early part of this century, growth continued steadily. Then World War II, the struggle for independence, civil war, all within the matter of a single decade, brought widespread destruction. Burma began the difficult task not only of rebuilding a devastated country, but also of uniting many ethnic groups into an independent nation. In 1962, military rule was established. Key government offices were staffed with army personnel. The government took control of all private schools and hospitals. Mission schools and hospitals had been important channels of reaching people with the gospel. Now, Christian teachers and nurses were challenged to live out their faith in a secular setting. In 1966, all foreigners were asked to leave Burma by government edict. Sadly, American Baptist missionaries packed up their belongings and said farewell to many longtime friends. The government introduced new policies called the Burmese Way to Socialism. Banks, industries, businesses, even small shops were nationalized. A more even distribution of goods through fixed prices and rationing was attempted. Imports were tightly controlled, but scarce commodities slipped in over the border at high prices. An era of chronic unemployment and underemployment began. Many friends outside Burma were concerned as to how the Christian movement in Burma would fare in this new situation. Would the economic problems besetting the nation affect the financial support of the churches? Would Christians begin to divide along tribal lines? Could they find new ways of carrying out the evangelistic task? Such concerns were soon dispelled. The possibility of a Burmese church without missionary personnel had been foreseen and planned for. Years before, primary responsibility for Baptist work in Burma had been transferred from the mission to the Burma Baptist Convention. Most of the leadership, from village pastors to seminary professors, was already in the hands of able and committed Burmese Christians whom American Baptists had helped to train. A spirit of let's work together overcame any tendency to divide into separate language groups. As a result, instead of entering a period of decline, the Christian movement has gone from strength to strength, 
the number of congregations has doubled since World War II. And there are now over 3,000 Baptist churches in Burma. Church membership has gone beyond the 400,000 mark. Many new church buildings have been constructed, as well as buildings for Christian centers, Bible schools, and hostels. Most churches have large, active Sunday schools. The First Baptist Church of Town G has 13 satellite Sunday schools throughout the city. Burma has many different ethnic groups. Each one has its own language, dress, and social customs. The Baptist churches are organized into associations along geographical and language lines. For example, the Sagar Karen churches in the West Delta area are members of the Basin Myung Mya Sagar Karen Association. The Po Karens have their own association in the same area. The other language groups are organized in much the same way, all joined together to support the mission and ministry of the Burma Baptist Convention. The convention, with offices in Rangoon, provides literature, leadership, and training programs for its member churches. Printed resources are particularly needed, but printing requires the permission of five different government departments, a time-consuming process. But it is being done in spite of old presses and scarcity of paper. Books and pamphlets have been printed in 13 languages. Even without printing, the Kachins launched an amazing evangelistic program some years ago called the Gideon's Band Campaign. Following the baptism of more than 6,000 new believers in the Irrawaddy River, a call went out for young people to be evangelists for three years without pay. The leaders had hoped that 300 volunteers might come forward to take up the challenge but more than a thousand people responded to the call. As Gideon did of old, they selected 300 who were trained as evangelists and sent out in teams. They visited hundreds of villages in the Kachin Hills, and when a village received them, they were fed and they preached and taught about Jesus. If a village refused to receive them, they walked on, hungry perhaps, but filled with optimism to the next village. At the end of a three-year period, some 8,657 villages had been visited, and 8,366 persons had been baptized in the name of the living Christ. The major source of Christian leadership in Burma is a cluster of three theological schools at Insain in a suburb of Rangoon. A wide range of theological studies is offered for both women and men. In addition, there are 27 Bible schools with a total enrollment of 1,500 students in different areas of Burma. Many of these students go on to serve in associations and conventions in their various departments of evangelism, Christian education, youth, women's work, men's work, and continuing education by correspondence. Baptists also cooperate with other denominations in ministering to Christian students on 10 college and university campuses all across Burma. An important part of Baptist outreach in Burma is an agricultural program where workers help farmers with better seed, plants, animal care, and related techniques. Baptists sponsor work camps for youth where volunteers build and repair churches, schools, bridges, dams, and water systems. They also share their faith. And when they leave for home, the young people have a feeling of accomplishment of having upgraded the life of another village. Women's work has always been a strong part of the Christian movement in Burma. Women's societies are fully integrated into each language association and the Burma Baptist Convention as major departments. The Baptists of Burma love to meet together at conventions. Planning starts years ahead. Extra rice, hogs, and chickens are raised. Temporary buildings and kitchens are constructed. The host association cares for all visitors. Attendance often runs into the thousands. When convention time arrives, 
Participants come from all directions. Many people walk for days to reach the meetings. There's a parade of the delegates and representatives. Friendships are renewed joyfully and new acquaintances are made. Singing is a favorite activity. Often there's a brass band to provide music. Many churches send volleyball teams for friendly competition. Groups in their tribal dress share in the cultural show with traditional dances. But most important is the fellowship, the inspiration, and the worshiping together. It is a time of renewal, recommitment, and making decisions for Christ. Often there is a mass baptism as a witness to the many non-Christians who are present. What is the outlook for the future? The economy of the country has continued to have problems. Burma is now among the poorer countries of the world. Christian pastors, teachers, and leaders have an average income of only $12 a month, well below the annual per capita income of $175. This barely covers the cost of basic necessities. When sickness comes, Medicine is often available only at four times or more the government set prices. It is beyond the reach of most Christians and may be counterfeit, mislabeled, outdated, or adulterated. Yet the people give to their church sacrificially. The churches and associations are self-supporting. The Baptist Church in Burma is a mature church with a clear national identity, a full partner with American Baptists seeking to evangelize the world. Burmese Baptists have caught the missionary vision. They have established mission outreach among the Nagas, Mios, Lahu, and Lisu tribes. They support more missionaries and evangelists than do American Baptists. So the Baptist witness in Burma continues to grow and bear fruit. Little did the Judsons realize when they began their work in that distant land that it would lead to a dynamic church of hundreds of thousands of believers. The Baptist church in Burma has flourished because Christians in America and in Burma have taken seriously Christ's command to make disciples of all nations. In spite of many obstacles, the Christian Church is alive in Burma. Let us give thanks and renew our commitment to strengthen and extend the Christian world mission.